Hey everybody and welcome to our first cooking event here today. So this is a little shout out to my friend Brittany, whose friend absolutely hates banjo music and everything that is the sticks. So this is for you guys, Gary. Alright, so today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be baking zucchini pineapple bread. Um, a lot of times what happens is you grow these gardens and sometimes you happen to get one and you missed it when you should have picked it. And the thing with zucchini, once they get to this size, well this is actually cut into thirds now, but you can get an idea of how large it was is this part here gets real mealy and the seeds get fairly large as you can see which makes it so that it's not really great for eating in like a sauce with like a uh, like a diced tomato or a stewed tomato um, and its taste isn't quite peak but you don't have to let these go to waste these can still be used and the best way to use these is for things like baking or cooking um, so stuffed zucchini um, so today we're going to be making it into bread so I'm just going to put this don't follow me over here alright so the first thing you're going to do is two things. First, you're going to set your oven to 350, and you're going to let that preheat, okay? The next thing you're going to do is you are going to butter your pan. Um, of course, you could use a baking spray like Pam or something like that. Um, I just prefer to do it this way. I feel like you get better coverage. I'm gonna make a mess, but that's okay. All right, so you're gonna grease your pan really good. Now, the measurements that I'm giving you today um, work to make two loaves in a pan that is uh, about nine by five. Right now, I'm using an eight and a half um, by four and a half pan. Um, but Really, you can use whatever size pan you want. Uh, it's just going to make different amounts. Um, so what I have would make two good loaves this size. Okay. After you butter your pan like that, you don't need a whole lot. So you can just pinch out some of the flour that we're going to use for the recipe, and you can just sprinkle it in there. And I'm not a big fan of waste, so I'm going to do it right over my flour bowl for the recipe. You just want to make sure you get that nice and covered. And so that also gives you the option to sprinkle a little bit more in, because whatever falls off is just going right back into your flour that you need. Okay. Now, you want it like this. You don't want too thick of a coat. Um, otherwise, it's going to leave kind of a layer on your bread. Um, so that's that. I'm going to put this off to the side for now so we have a nice clean workspace. The biggest thing about I like is I like to be neat, okay? So here is our flour mixture, and I'm actually going to go like this, because uh, you can get messy. Put those there. You're going to start with a medium-sized bowl, and you're going to fill it with three cups of sugar. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Not three cups of sugar. You're going to fill your sugar bowl with a cup and a half of sugar. I've seen different recipes for this. 
you can add in a little bit more sugar. You can add a cup and three quarters, two cups of sugar. Um, it does get very sweet though, especially with the pineapple. So what I actually did from my original recipe was I actually cut it back a quarter of a cup. Um, just to cut that sweetness a teeny bit. All right. To that, we're going to add two tape. Sorry, two teaspoons of baking powder, and we're also going to add a teaspoon of baking soda and two teaspoons of cinnamon. So I have that all pre-measured right here. So we're going to add that to our sugar mixture. I forgot to empty the dishwasher, so i got to use the baby whisk, but that's okay. Gonna whisk that together. Kind of get out the little clumps of baking soda and the baking powder. Sometimes when you're putting it into the measuring spoons, it does pack down a little bit and it does kind of clump together. So you want to try to get that out as best you can. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add three eggs. I'm using jumbo white, so you can use whatever type of egg it is that you prefer. I use whatever's on sale. That's just me. Some people are very into, you know, the whole cage-free, ooh, double yolk. Make a wish, everybody. Um, the, you know, the cage-free movement and, you know, stuff like that. Um, which is actually interesting. If you go online and you read the FDA's guidelines on what it is. Ooh, another double yolk. Look at that. It's going to be moist. Um, if you go online to the FDA website and you read their guidelines for what they classify as cage-free and free-range, um, you may actually be surprised. And you may find out that you're paying this extra money to buy eggs that are cage-free, and they may not actually have to be cage-free. Uh, the last time I checked, I believe that I read that to be considered cage-free, the animals only need to have to get out of their cage for, I believe it was an hour a day. So there are a good chance that you could be being duped by these companies. To that we're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla. I had to think about that. I'm sorry. We're going to blend that. I know getting really good. Okay. We're going to put this aside for one second. Okay. And now I do have to open the dishwasher, actually. So I don't sift my flour. If you want to, you can. Um, it's just a personal thing. What I like to do is I just like to take the whisk and run it through it. Just kind of loosens it up a little bit. And then you're not going through all that hassle of actually sifting out the flour. To the flour, we're going to add our sugar mixture. And this is where it gets a little bit messy and a little bit fun. So yesterday when I was doing my pre-bake for today's show, I, uh, I was shooting flour everywhere. So let's hope for me that I don't do that again. And I guess hope for you that I do because it would be kind of funny. All right, and I'm just going to fold this together to try to moisten up that flour a little bit so it's not shooting all over the place. Now you're going to see that the batter is um, a little doughy right now, which is, you know, it's bread. We want dough. Um, as we add the pineapple and the zucchini, it is going to be kind of moist. You may think that it's a little bit too wet, um, but I promise you that it's not. I promise you that it is going to be 
perfectly fine. Now if you wanted to not do this with pineapple, you could do this with chopped walnuts, with golden raisins. There's lots of different things that you could use it with and it would still taste great. I happen to love pineapple, so that's what I'm choosing to use today. And that was actually the one thing that I forgot to measure out. So, to our mix, which I left kind of floury still because I don't want to make a mess with the flour, you're going to add one cup of crushed pineapple. And if you go over a little bit, don't worry about it. Um, I guess that's more of a personal preference. The first time I made this, I actually didn't use the crushed pineapple. I used the chunked pineapple. I really like pineapple, so for me, that worked well. You're going to add that to your flour mixture. Okay. And again, we're just going to fold it in and try to get it combined together as best as possible. I prefer to stir everything by hand, whether it's cakes, breads, any type of baking. I like to do everything by hand. I'm not big into um, me, using electric mixers or anything like that. So I do everything by hand. And now, to this, we're going to add two and a half cups of zucchini that has been shredded, uh, shredded, excuse me, not shredded. So, to get your zucchini in this type of texture, the easiest way to do it, to get it at this consistency, is to just put it in a, in a cheese grater, hand, hand do it. Um, if anybody else has any other suggestions and you know you'd like to share them please do I would greatly appreciate that I'm always looking for suggestions okay so we're gonna add that in okay. and we're gonna just keep combining this now the great thing about zucchini bread I think and I'm sure that other people with kids can agree, or even other people with picky husbands or spouses who don't care for vegetables. I know that I have a, a combination of all of those things, is that you can't really taste the zucchini in it. So it's nice because you can trick them into eating their vegetables. I'm just going to clean off that spatula because we don't want to waste any of this. So I'm just going to make sure that I get all that in the bowl. Okay. So I think that one of the other things that I really wanted to talk to you guys about today was that, you know, I definitely have some local competition here in this part of Plymouth, but I don't even really think that I can consider them my competition. You're going to stop at this place and you're going to pay grocery store prices. And I'm not saying that their vegetables aren't fresh or anything like that. Because trust and believe that if they weren't fresh, people wouldn't stop there. What I'm saying is that for no cost and for, you know, if you wanted to give a donation, you can. You don't have to. You can come here to 7 Mayflower Street. We are literally less than a mile away from these people, and you can get a lot of the same vegetables absolutely free. Um, last summer, when I began doing the vegetable portion of the homestead, um, let me grab my pan. I set out to make sure that people could get fresh fruits and vegetables that are organically grown and, you know, um, fresh and clean at little to no cost. And I first set my sights on 
the elderly and making sure that the local elderly people in my neighborhood um, could have a chance to get this stuff. Um, and it kind of spread. Uh, okay. So I'm just going to pause for one second on that, and I'm just going to push this down a little bit. You don't want to push it down too much because you don't want it to be very uh, stuck in there. It'll turn out to be like a brick um, otherwise. Okay. All right. So this is now what you have. You got your bread pan. It's full. I left about an inch off the top. It's pretty good spacing. Um, if you want to just clean it up, you can come back in here with a paper towel right now. And you can clean this part up right here on the sides. But it's not necessary, you know. Um, might just make your bread look a little bit cleaner when it comes out of the pan. But it's not necessarily going to make it... Did I see that? It's not necessarily going to make it look any better, taste any better. I just want to give a shout out to one of my friends watching now. Hi Jody. thank you for joining us today. So now it's in our pan. We're going to put it in the oven now for 55 minutes. I would love to stay and chat with all of you for 55 minutes. But I highly doubt that you want to sit here and listen to me talk for 55 minutes about local farming and what it does for our economy and all that fun jazz. So, what I did yesterday was I pre-baked so that I would have this ready for today. I just want to show you that. Look at that. Look at the color. Okay. You can see how moist it is. Um, you can see the big chunks of pineapple. Now, this recipe was a little bit different than I'm used to. Typically, when you bake zucchini bread, it comes out with a pretty dark color. I'm not really sure why this one came out so light. Um, but I'll tell you, it tastes good. And I got Matt to eat it, and I got my kids to eat it. So, it's good. But this is what you wind up with, and it's beautiful. I mean, you can see the zucchini in it. But like I said, you can't taste it, which is great. I'm going to take one of these clean pans right here, just to give you guys an idea. Okay? So when your oven does finally beep, you're going to take your pan out. The best thing you can do is sit it down on its side, and when you sit it down on its side like that, you're going to allow for it to start to separate from the edge. This is good because once it cools, you can just boop, pop your pan over and it'll just flop right out. Okay? Um, so like I said, uh, Please stop by 7 Mayflower Street. Come join us here. Come get some free fruits and vegetables. Donations are always welcome. We send them off to the bank account to go into the spending for next year's plant budget. And if you ask my husband, my plant budget is far too high as it is already. So if you don't want to, and he's shaking his head yes right now as he holds the camera. So if you don't want to donate, please you're just helping him out in the process because it's just a few less plants that I make him help me take care of. Um, in other news, real quick, I just want to I just want to throw it out there that I'm going to be running the Marine Corps Marathon on October 30th of this year. I'm running it in honor of specialist, army specialist, excuse me, Stephen Egutowski, who was a Plymouth resident here. September 28th marks the fifth anniversary of his passing in Afghanistan. Um, I will post a link in a little while. I do have a GoFundMe page to help me get there and 
make my dream possible. Um, but please, you know, support me. Let's support our troops and support our veterans. You want to say hi? And in, also, in honor of Middle Child Day, thank you, hashtag Twitter. This is my middle son, Asher, and yesterday was his fourth birthday. Huh. Here. Want to try a piece of cake? Is this Mmm. Chew it. It's cake. It's pineapple. How is it? Pineapple cake. Yeah. Is it good? Uh-huh. Tell them you think it's good. It's good. Tell them, say it. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> From all of us here at the Half Acre Homestead, thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope that you join us next time for our next craft or project. Thank you.